Hey guys, so I posted this render yesterday. Uh, I was pretty happy with how it turned out and I figured it'd be nice to make a video going over how to make realistic looking roofs like this uh, pretty fast and it's pretty easy as well. So let me hop into the main Blender file and show you guys what it looks like. Oh, Blender's going crazy right now. So let me zoom in on the house. This is what the file looks like. And if you want a full project breakdown for this, I am also posting a project breakdown on my Patreon, which will be going over more than just modeling the roof, but it will cover how I did the vegetation, how I did the lighting, how I uh, went about modeling more parts of the house and just more detail and more helpful information for you guys. So I will post a link below if you want access to that. But for this video, I'm just gonna cover the roof, which hopefully that helps you guys, so. Let me go to the main modeling file. Sweet, so here's the main modeling file. Uh, it's just the house and I'm working in here because there's not all the extra objects and things bogging down my system. So I'll be able to model much quicker. Uh, this, whole, this whole file will also be available on my Patreon for you guys to download and use for whatever you want in your guys' scenes. But yeah, so I have this pushed to the side because I'm going to be modeling out a basic block out version so I can do a separate rooftop for you guys. Over here, I'm just going to shift A and then create a cube. And I'm going to go into edit mode where you'll see I have these measurements. So that's two feet by two feet. You can enable that by being in edit mode and going to the overlays and under measurements, just toggle edge length. You can also do angle and like face area and all of that. I never use those, but the edge length is what I use all the time. So I believe the measurements for this house were 30 feet by 24. So I'm going to just do that. If you hold control, it will snap to increments too. So control 30 feet. You can do the snap to uh, settings down here too. So I have it set to increment. So side view, I'm gonna do 24 feet, same thing. Sweet. Grab the top face, make that about 10 feet still holding control when I pull up. So I think 16 feet. And then I'm going to add a edge loop by hitting control R, then grab this top edge and pull that up to about 13.9. Yeah. So face select and grab these top two faces and shift D to duplicate those faces and then right click to deselect them or let go of them. And I'm just going to create the roof now from this. So right here, it's set to global on the transformations. If you set it to normal, whatever you select, those transformations will also follow the normal. But yeah, now I can go into edge selection, grab this edge, while holding control, pull it out about two feet and do the same with this edge. And then that looks about right. So I'm gonna hit control L and that will uh, select the rest of the object that I'm selecting the edge of. And then scale on the Y axis by hitting the middle mouse button and then just pull it out a little bit. And I think that looks about right. Yeah. So now I'm gonna do Alt E and then extrude along normals. And that will just extrude it along whatever normal I'm extruding. So I'm just gonna pull that up about 0.73, that looks fine. And then I'm gonna do it one more time, but not as far. And that looks about right. So alt left click on this edge right here and it'll select the whole entire loop. And I'm gonna alt E extrude by normals again, pull that out and then create an edge loop in the center of that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to alt E extrude along the normals and pull that out. So we already got the base model of the roof. But if you go over here, I also have an extrusion on the top as well, right here. So I'm going to also create that. Control R, create an edge loop. And on the factor right here, uh, maybe like 0.85. Yeah, that's actually perfect. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Control R. And this one will be the same value, but in the negative. So negative 0.85 and those line up perfect. So I'm gonna grab these top faces. So click this side and then control click all the way over here and all the in-between ones will be selected as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. 
So I'm just going to extrude these up now. Cool. So we've got the base model of the house uh, or the roof. So now I'm going to add the roof tiles. And for that, I used a free add on called Bagapai, the $0 one. It's completely free. It's got a ton of different features. Uh, click J in the viewport, and it brings up this pie menu with all of this. But I'm going to want to use tiles, which as you can see, it brings up these tiles. And I'm going to line it up with the rooftop real fast, and then I'll show you what it can do. So I'm going to pull this up. And I'm just going to try to line this up with the bottom of the roof, just like right about there. Sweet. I'm going to go to the bag of pie window on the end panel, and all of these will change what the tiles look like. So I'm going to go to the side view and line up the angle. So you can, of course, use R to rotate like that, or you can use this slider, the angle slider. And I'm just going to use that, and I'm going to just try to make sure the end of it also lines up, so I think about 30. That looks correct, I think. Sweet. So we got the angle most likely correct. Uh, if I change the type, you can sort through different types of tiles. I'm just going to want to do type 5, which is the flat tile. I'm just going to try to find the right length and width. 0.2 more wide, say 0.4. I think that looks good enough. And I want these to be angled a little bit higher, so I'm going to use the angle tile, which will do the rotation of each individual tile. And I'm just going to bring it down a little bit lower, maybe negative 0.01. This is kind of clipping too, so I'm going to also G and Z, and it will transform it up on the z-axis just a little bit. Cool. So I'm going to adjust the x count and try to get the width right. Nice, that lines up almost exactly already. I didn't have to do any scaling. Um, now the y. So just wanted to at least reach this top section because I'm going to be doing a second one to reach the top. And that looks, that looks right. I don't really like how these go inward like this as much, so I think that was the width offset. Yeah, so is that. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. I think I kind of like it like that more. So now I'm going to do this top section. Um, I'm just going to shift D to duplicate and then try to line it up. It's only going to be two tiles high. And I don't want overlap on this part, but I don't mind if there's hang off on this part because it will cover up the gap. So. That works right there. And I'm just gonna adjust the Y count. I only want two, so I'm gonna go to two. Perfect, and we got that side of the roof. Let me actually focus on cycles too, so you can see in the cycles viewport. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna shift select and have both of these selected, and I can right click and convert to mesh. Now it's on shade smooth, so you can see the shading and the edges kind of look weird and soft. With these two selected again, you can uh, go over here and click Shade Auto Smooth, and that will fix the shading. So that's a quick fix. So now we have this converted as mesh, and now what I can do is I can go into Edit Mode, and now I can actually like mess with individual tiles. I can UV map, and that will come in handy because I'm going to be doing the uh, proportional editing to just move edge loops around and kind of add like dents, bumps, uh, kind of just make this look weathered. So before that, I'm just going to grab these two and in top view, I'm going to click Shift D and then duplicate and then rotate 90 degrees. You can hold control and it will snap by about five or 10 um, degrees for rotation. And then I'm just going to try to line that up. I think that works just fine. Cool. So I think I'm going to move on to materials before I start doing any more editing. Um, for the materials, I used Blender Kit, which let me go down here. And yeah, so as you can see, I have like stone typed in right here under materials. If I click this little eye, it'll just bring up a material window. And all you got to do is just click that material and it will automatically go into whatever selected material slot you have. Um, it's very easy. They also have a website which does the exact same thing. Um, 
Yeah, it's just like uh, Quixel Mega Scans. You just get this material, and it will automatically be sent over into this part right here. And you just got to do the same thing. Just click on it. It's pretty easy. Uh, it's free, but they also have a subscription plan, which you can get access to more models and more materials, which that's currently what I have. But you don't need that. Um, so I already have the materials I used in here. So I'm just going to use those. So st stone wall and then the roof was wood yeah hand painted wood i'm gonna adjust the uvs for the house first so you can see they look terrible um all you gotta do is go into edit mode click a and they'll select everything on that object click u and q project cool so now i'm just going to click part of the roof and then click Control l and i'll select the rest of the roof and click on hand painted wooden boards and assign or whatever wooden material you use, doesn't matter. But now these are separated and we're good. For the tiles, I use a different one called roof tile. And this material is different. I didn't get this from Blender Kit. I actually use textures.com, which let me UV this real fast. So in edit mode, click A and then U, Q project. And now it's UV. So you can see there's like stain marks and it looks like there's been like water leaking down and stuff. And it was just a, uh, yeah. So on textures.com, I just found a asphalt close-up picture. And how I got the stains though was up here, I just used a noise texture and I put that on overlay. So you can see without, if I turn the overlay factor to zero, it's just the basic uh, asphalt material. And then the more you bring that factor up, it will show that noise. And what a noise texture does is, as you can see, it's just basically noise uh, between black and white values. And let me show this again. Yeah, so it being on overlay, the dark values are darkening the texture underneath it. So I also stretched it on the x-axis. So originally it was around one and you can see it's more round and blobby. I just kind of slid this until it looked right. Um, I figured this kind of looks kind of like it's been like leaking down water and stains. So I use that uh, technique on multiple different textures on this model actually as well. So it's a, it's a fun thing to do and it looks pretty decent. So I'm just going to assign the same material to the other roofs. So I'm just gonna right click material utilities and roof tiles. And I'm just going to UV those as well with cube projection. All right, so now I'm going to start adding some dents and bumps and kind of just make the model look old and like weathered and kind of beat up. So on the number pad, if you click the uh, slash, it will solo out the selected object. So I'm going to start adding edge loops on the model. So control R and I think I want like, yeah, eight is good. So I'm going to do it on the horizontal four yeah eight and four so i'm gonna do it on the back side as well now i'm gonna go into proportional editing which you can click right here or o on the keyboard and i want to make sure i have connected only selected because when i pull this up it won't affect the uh, other mesh connected but if i have that turned off the house will also move with it and that's not at all what i want i'm gonna go into vertex mode and I'm just going to start pulling up, down, just kind of moving different uh, parts of the model while also scrolling to change the fall off of proportional editing. And I'm just going to, I'm going to pull this, this side up a little bit. So I'm not really trying to make it like too perfect or anything because I don't know, just kind of being a little bit random and destructive with it kind of gives more of a natural look, I feel like. So I'm just going to pull things up, down. Now I'm gonna exit edit mode and then also exit the soloed view. And then I'm gonna grab the tiles and do the same exact thing. But you can see now it's only affecting one tile. So that's when you wanna turn off connected only. So now I can move all of the different tiles together at once. I don't need to make it too perfect. I just wanna kind of have them be lined up enough and it can take a little bit of messing around with to get right, but 
I just want to make sure there's no clipping between the two different uh, meshes. So as long as that's there, we're good. Cool, that is fine. So this one, I'm just gonna do the same on the top part. Grab this, pull it up a little bit, maybe pull it down over here though, but adjust the fall off to make it a little bit sharper. Pull this down. Cool, so we got that. And now it's time to offset individual tiles. And I mean, you can do separate, like different, different ways of selections. You can like kind of just shift select different random vertices or edges or whatever and then hit control l and have those selected that's a good way or you can go to select select random which is an even more random way to do it a ratio of one is a hundred percent of everything selected if you go to like 0 0.0015 barely anything will be selected and then you can do control l again same thing oh and you can see how everything rotates around one uh one single origin point if you go to, one sec, let me also change this. If you go down to here to bounding box, that's what it's on. If you change it to individual origins, now every individual piece has their own origin. So I'm just gonna like move these up a little bit. So I don't really wanna affect too many at once. So I just, I'll just do that. And then go back to select and we can do the same thing, but instead of selecting more by random, you can go to deselect. And then the higher value will deselect more. So let's do like 0.95. And I'm just going to offset a few more. So I'm gonna to try to just line these up a little bit, kind of just make sure they're not clipping or anything. Um, now in face mode, I'm just going to kind of manually do individual ones on their own now. Move that one pretty far down and then maybe, I don't know, like this. Doesn't have to be too perfect either because at least for the way I was using this, uh, it's pretty far away. So you won't really notice too many like weird details or anything. Uh, this is just like kind of a good kind of minimal detail that you'll notice from afar, but like it's going to be pretty subtle still um, from a distance. I don't like how you can see the blue underneath here, so I'm going to go back to the house model, uh, solo that out, and then I'm just going to grab these top faces. I just click C to go into the brush select. I'm just going to do that over here as well. I'm just going to assign the roof material to that. So roof. Cool, and now it looks a little more natural. Uh, yeah, so from afar, can't really tell too much uh, of like anything floating or like any weird details, but I might've done too many tiles because as you can see in here, I didn't do nearly as many, but you guys get the idea for how that works so yeah so i can show you guys how to do the moss so i use a add-on called g scatter by graswald uh graswald is a paid add-on you can also use particle scatters or like any other free add-on as well but I, I just like using graswald so i'm gonna assign that to the house model and go to the assets and i'm just gonna find the moss i want i'll do that one sweet so I don't want it scattered all over, so I'm going to also select the house again. And to select on, like only this roof tile material, you can just have this highlighted and click select. And then I'm going to control G, assign to group. And that will make a vertex group that I want to name Moss. I'm going to click this to change the LOD. And then I'm going to also select the Moss. And if you go to object properties and viewport display, display as bounds. And that will just make your viewport a lot faster and less laggy. Um, I do that to all trees, all particle systems, like everything that's just, anything that there's a lot of in my scene, I'll just change to bounds. Add effect, and I'm gonna do weight mask. And right here, I'm just gonna type in moss. 
So now it's underneath the tiles and a way to fix that is under distribution, go to translate. And now you can translate it on any different axis you need. So I'm just gonna raise it up a little bit until it's all showing but not floating. Nice, that works. And then I'm also gonna add another effect called Musgrave. And the Musgrave works pretty similar to the noise texture I was showing you earlier. It's just kind of like a different pattern that that pattern affects the distribution now. So the lower values will make a bigger kind of blob, I guess. I need to change the density too. I'm just, I don't know, like 150 or something. So now you can see it. So I'm gonna change the seed. And you can see the scattering, yeah, I don't want it to be that big. So maybe like 0.2, we'll make the blobs a little bit smaller. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's see. Yeah, so you can see in the main model, um, I definitely did a lot more to the actual house, like the chimneys, the uh, antennas, the windows, all the under parts of the roof, and like lots more detail. But I'll be covering all of the modeling or more parts of the modeling and like how I did the path, uh, how I go about doing the vegetation, the scattering, uh, also my lighting techniques for like good lighting, shadowing, and like the vignetting and framing around the scene, um, composition, etc. I post other tutorials and full process videos for every single project I make as well, along with assets. Sometimes I live stream as well while I work. So my Patreon will be linked down below. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Uh, please leave a comment if you have any other tutorial suggestions. Um, I'll see you guys next time.